Hello, my name is Charles, and today I'm excited to take you through a new feature for GA4 Properties, also known as Google Analytics 4, or the new version of Google Analytics. Uh, and I'm going to take us through a new feature for cross-domain tracking. So what we're going to do is I'm going to first take us into the GA4 property that I have. And in this GA4 property, right now we're in real time. So today, what we're going to try and do is to set up cross-domain tracking. So I work for a company called Adswerve, and we actually have two websites. We have an Analytics Pros website, and then we also have an Adswerve website. And the reason for that is we were actually acquired, uh, Analytics Pros, by Adswerve a few years ago, and we still have our legacy domain up uh, for a variety of reasons. In addition, we actually have links in between these websites. So this is a common challenge for uh, any analytics system like Google Analytics, where ideally we have these two separate domains and we wanna track users and visits and campaign sources between each site as a single entity. And by default, uh, most analytics platforms like Google Analytics create uh, and use first party cookies for the primary ID. And those first party cookies are usually only scoped for each domain. So Adswerve has one cookie and Analytics Pros has a separate cookie, meaning Simply, they're two different users. So we need a feature like cross-domain tracking in order to share uh, the common user ID between these two different domains. If you've ever used the legacy version of Google Analytics, also known as Universal Analytics, you may have come across the complicated cross-domain tracking guides. And Simo has a, a great abundance of these that you can access on his blog, simohava.com. But what's exciting about this new version of Google Analytics is simply cross-domain tracking is gonna be way easier to set up and hopefully allow most marketers to do it without having to actually go into Google Tag Manager or edit your hard code tags uh, to enable those old linker settings. So let's dive in. Within GA4, uh, all you need is you need edit level admin permissions. And if you have those edit level permissions, you can go into the admin section in your GA4 property. And what we're gonna be looking for in here is we're gonna be looking to go inside our data streams. Inside your data streams, you're gonna want to go into the website you've configured. So in here, I have my primary stream for Adsworth. Uh, if you've set up uh, different streams for each website that you're trying to link together, you'll need to enable the settings we're gonna go through in each stream. An alternative setup is some uh, companies might have one stream which has multiple websites, uh, which would just mean simply you would uh, only need to enable everything once instead of in multiple streams. So in here, I've gone into my AdSwerve uh, stream. Uh, if you have access to this new feature, which is cur currently rolling out now, you'll see a new tagging set settings option. Don't worry if you don't have this, uh, it'll be coming uh, soon. So maybe just check back in a few days. But all you have to do is you have to go into tagging settings and there's a variety of new features. The one we're gonna focus on is to configure your domains option. I'm gonna select that and in here it opens up the configuration uh, selection. Now in here, there's a really important note. If you currently use the uh, legacy version of Google Analytics, the Google Analytics Universal Properties, note that there's a link to a Help Center article. And in here, uh, there's actually some specifics that you'll need to focus on if you are actually dual tagging, meaning if you're running the new GA4 properties, in addition to the Universal Analytics, it's gonna be very important that you try and map the settings between each. Uh, which means you might need to go update your old Universal Analytics library uh, and just make sure those settings are the same. Uh, if you don't, you could have some inconsistencies where you might actually be impacting the way users or sessions or campaigns are, ca are counted in one. So simply, it's important to be consistent. Um, if you're not using Universal, it's going to be uh, even more simpler because all you have to do is just worry about the GA4 configuration. In here, all we do is we click our pencil to go into the edit, and we simply need to just add our domains. And what's nice about this is we have flexible map matching options. So it begins with contains and even matching regex. 
regex allows us to do those very powerful lookups. So if you have a long list of domains you're looking to match, uh, you can use regex to maybe enter everything in a single step. Or another way is you can simply come in here and add in each domain you want to link together. So in this example, I'm trying to link my AdSwerve and my Analytics Pros uh, websites together so that my users, again, will be counted as a single visit and my traffic sources will be consistent throughout whenever users uh, click those links in between. Now, all I have to do is enter those two websites and click Save. Now that I've done that, I'm actually done setting up my cross-domain tracking. Uh, now, if I actually go to my website, on my website, if I have any links like this analytics pros uh, call to action in the top right hand corner, if I click that and I actually observe what my link looks like, we can actually see cross domain tracking has now uh, applied to all of my links in between. And we can see that through this addition of the new uh, GL parameter, or I'm going to call it the Google linker parameter. Um, if you see that whenever you click a link in between your two domains after you've hit save, then you know cross domain uh, has worked. And what that's going to allow you to do is now, if you go back uh, from this point in time forward, uh, all of your engagement and any of your reports inside your new GA4 property will ensure that users navigating between those links will be treated as that single user uh, kind of that single session and carry through the attribution needed to do. If you didn't enable cross domain tracking, then what would happen here is anytime a user clicked a link between your two different websites like AdSwerve and Analytics Pros, it's actually going to break the attribution. Uh, we're going to ha definitely have two users instead of one user, and it might uh, actually increment a variety of other me uh, metrics negatively. So that's why cross domain tracking is important. Another really nice feature, just so you know, as an additional bonus, uh, Google Analytics in these new GA4 properties has something called enhanced measurement. And that's enabled by default when you create your stream. And one of the things enhanced measurement does is it'll actually track outbound links automatically without you needing to do anything. Uh, and a nice addition with the new outbound link tracking is that it will no longer treat links in between your own websites as outbound links like it would have done without the setting. So all in all, to kind of summarize this, cross-domain tracking is way uh, simpler in the new GA4 properties. We have some nice additional items where it'll improve some of our data integrity uh, by actually applying this automatically uh, through the UI instead of requiring updates to your code, which means it'll actually result in you being able to do this way quicker uh, and uh, potentially uh, more scalable because it applies to everything where that code was where previously you had to go make sure you kind of implemented it all correctly. So long story short, it's now way simpler. It should result in better data. And I really like the direction this is going. So with that, uh, thanks for uh, listening in and hope to be back with some more videos soon.